Switch up. Thank you. 
If we could have people start taking some seats. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the 2019 Sim National Sim Competition. All right, like, am I standing up here by myself? I said, welcome to the Sim Competition. Let the teams hear you. Thank you. The teams are literally uh, over about 15 feet over the wall, so I wanted to make sure they heard you loud and clear. Uh, as we get started, the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming out tonight. I want to give a, um, a thank you to our Assistant Commissioner, Chris Newworth, for coming out this evening as well. Um, and also a special thanks to all of our vendors that have uh, made this possible. We had a flight, simulator flat, um, <laughs> flight Simulator Lab from Bergen County. Uh, Gumard, who has been a, a sponsor for years with us, Seton Hall University, and of course, Jen McCarthy and 579 um, Solutions. I want to thank them so much. We could not have done this without them. What you understand is that we start planning this probably three weeks from today. We'll start planning next year's uh, conference and next year's simu uh, simulation. So we want to thank everybody for coming out, and we want to definitely thank our vendors. The next thing I'd like to do is acknowledge all of the teams that competed. We had a scenario. Um, for the preliminaries, that was a golf uh, injury. Basically, it was a lightning strike. Uh, it was a cardiac arrest and a patient that had hearing affected from being in close proximity. Uh, the teams were under a lot of stress, um, and they all did fantastic. And the one thing we want to stress is all the teams, it's only a little bit that separates them. So teams that didn't make it, they still were wonderful. They did a fantastic job, and they need to be recognized. So if you're in the room, I want you to stand up, please. Atlantic Mobile Health Systems. Merritt EMS or FDMY, JFK EMS, Westlake Fire, Senior Care, Capital Health, Blue and Green, Capital Health BLS. Come on up, please, guys, come on up. Tom's River, Laurel Lake, Englewood, and JFK, come on up. Just to get a good picture. These guys work so hard yesterday and deserve a round of applause and deserve to be recognized. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent job. Excellent. So what we did to switch things up a little bit this year, we had our three ALS and three BLS uh, finalists in no particular order. They were randomly selected. We had the first crew run through um, just recently, and it was Westlake Fire Department and Laurel Lake EMS, which are sitting right up front. Our next team... Team two that's going to be running through is going to be uh, Senior Care ALS and Tom's River First Aid. And then rounding out will be Atlantic Mobile Health and JFK. Now I'd like to hand it over to uh, Jennifer McCarthy from 579 Solutions and Seton Hall who's going to tell you about tonight's scenario. Thank you everybody for coming out. As you know, we use uh, Rip from the Headlines as my theme when we're dealing with simulation competition. So, um, and sometimes the headlines are also driven off of the simulation design, which is always a sad point for us. This was Rip from the Headlines. 
Uh, we have a small Cessna plane that's approaching. There's a medical emergency with the pilot causing the co-pilot, who is a civilian passenger, has to land the Cessna. There's uh, going to be a small flame involved and some fire as the crew is arriving here. You'll notice that's why they're in their gear. The bottom line with simulation that I hope everybody can walk away with is the aspect that we're trying to improve patient safety. While this is a fun night and we're hooting and hollering, we are improving patient safety because we've changed this competition from being what I call the Kobayashi Maru, the unwinnable, to actually a clinical-based championship. So while it seems very chaotic, the rubric rating is all based on clinical accuracy and clinical skill. And that, for me, makes my heart sing because patients' lives depend on the care that we give. So no further ado or delay, let's get everybody in place. taking us up today man this is awesome i've never been in a plane like this before it's really not a problem i'm sorry i couldn't do it earlier um when we get a little higher i can make it go upside down if you want if uh, yeah, no, like no, it, no 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 no, 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 no like I, 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 okay i get motion sick let's stay away from that. <laughs> i usually charge extra for that i don't i don't know if you're allowed to do that uh every now and then every now and then oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> Whoops! There's a really good chance that the wings will fall off, though. So. But I mean, it's a beautiful day. It's gorgeous there out. Is, there's no traffic. There's no construction. There's no cops. There's no potholes. This well, there's usually beautiful. not. There's usually not cops. This is great. Thank you so much for taking us up today. It's, it's, Are you taking pictures? Let's take a picture. Yeah. Hold on. Stand by a second. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, copy. New York Center. This is Cessna Juliet 1631 with you at one zero thousand. Have you copy up? Uh, read you loud and clear from the Julia 1631, but this is filled up yet for a New York Center. Who was that? Uh, New York approach. Uh, that's a wind shear. Did you mess up? No, no, sometimes you hit turbulence. Uh, not, not funny. Let's... It wasn't fun. No, it wasn't my fault. I, I couldn't do it. I can't avoid it. If they had a turbulence sign, I wouldn't, you know. Okay. Uh, stay by. New York Center, this is, uh, oh. this is, uh, 1630. Copy. Yeah, 1631, name your attention. Um, yeah, this is this is Philadelphia. We're headed to New York at 1631. Uh, Philadelphia, can you hear me? Philadelphia, go ahead. Uh, Philadelphia, I'm, I'm the passenger in this plane. I, I think something's going wrong. My my uh, my friend's not making any sense here. Uh, Julia, 1631. Just uh, confirmation. How many souls on board and people remaining? Do you know? How many souls? Souls. Three. Three people. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Just Three let people. Your soul okay. Go. He's breathing. All right, we'll get you on the ground as quick as possible. But no, he's snoring. He's, he's breathing, but he's, he's unconscious. City control tower emergency line. Uh, city, this is uh, Philly Approach. We have a uh, Cessna inbound to runway 579er. It's Juliet 1631. The pilot is incapacitated, and we have a non rated civilian flying the airplane. Three souls on board, two hours of fuel remaining. Cessna Juliet 1631, approaching runway 579. Medical emergency on board for pilot, civilian operator approaching. Three souls on board, category echo response will be ready for their arrival. I'm not in a plane, I've never flown before. How do I remain calm? Are we gonna crash? We're gonna crash. Attention all emergency equipment response alert to runway 579 left. Attention all emergency equipment response alert to runway 579 left. What operations are happening right now?
left leg. Second pulse. You can play with those if you like, sir. Right, left arm. Left arm. So I notice any deep happening to the left of the corner is confused with the plane. Don't attempt to go cubicle. Is he responding at all with the bagging? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Unresponsive. If you squeeze it, how old is he? How? So I got a pediatric epidemic. Patient time route, drug dose, documentation. Am I going to his arm? Okay. Well, we're taking a BGL on him. Right, I hear you from the back. Okay. You can't hold it. Please don't. Okay. I got a line in here. I'm going to be very fast. Oh, that guy's a key. What do you got? Sir, come here with me. Hold on. Okay, my sight. Okay. Yeah, he's a red. That's it, just him? Yeah. Dennis, can you talk to me? Can you talk to me? He's a red. Who are you, sir? Can you talk to me? He's doing good. He's doing good. So we're looking at about an 18 kilograms, kid. Am I getting any blood out of here? Okay, I'm going to get him a toy. You know what? Get him to squeeze that back to you. I'll sell it for two, okay? There's no blood coming out of the blood. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay, everybody, we're going to regroup while we touch up Moulaj, get set for the next team. It's my honor to introduce Dr. Ben Abbo. You should be clapping, Mom. <laughs> so I didn't have the honor of working with Ben on an EMS level, but it has been my honor the last couple of years to get to know him in a simulation realm through this process. He doesn't need much introduction. He's very funny, and I'm going to pass it off at that. Hello, all right. So, is, who, is anyone here named Michael? Is there a Michael in the room? No, Michael? All right, all good. So, my name is Ben Abel, I'm a paramedic physician from down in Florida, and as Jen said, as we get the moulage things uh, set back up, just wanted to talk to you a little bit, kind of a preview of it, like, these two talks, right? We get a lot out of this scenario because it also comes from the flight industry where we as a culture have a lot to learn from the flight industry for flight safety, right? All these annoying rules where your flight's canceled because the pilot only has so much hours that they can fly and this kind of stuff like that. It comes from some pretty standard research to change the culture of safety. So back when I was a paramedic, before I even thought I was going into med school, I started working on a preliminary project that was the prelim to this. This is the EMS safety attitudes questionnaire. What they did with the pilots was they gave them a whole series of surveys, said, what's your attitude towards this? Do you think you have the right equipment? Do you think you have the right Partners, do you think that you have the right training? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough pay? We took that at the University of Pittsburgh and we modified that for EMS. And that was the EMS SAQ. We did a prelim study, did a secondary prelim where we looked at three different services. And I know there's like some boring graphs, like who the heck wants to look at this, right? You can look at my pretty face and hair anyway. But it was interesting because in the same geographic area, the same city, right, in the same county, three services on all these different things, safety, climate, teamwork, was vastly different. Because if you've seen one EMS system, you've seen one system. The study went on to get pretty big, and Dan Patterson, who's a paramedic researcher at, in Pittsburgh, uh, really started kind of really looking at this. And that's where a lot of our fatigue and different things come out. Australia recently just came out with another one. The same safety attitudes questionnaire, looking at the same service. They did a survey among all their medics and EMTs. And then the next year they did the same thing and saw differences. So we know that this is a valid tool to look at our culture, because that's a really sexy topic, right? EMS safety, it's not just about patient safety. What about our safety, right? A big sexy term is just culture, where a lot of things have been changing, where do you have the right equipment? What if something happens? What if you mess up? What if you didn't know how to use the monitor correctly? What if you didn't have the right tubes, right? This culture and ever-changing thing is becoming much more of a just culture. And some people say, oh, just culture is because no one wants to get hurt, hurt anybody's feelings, they don't want to scapegoat. But it's not taking blame away. It's looking at the system, right? How, as a paramedic, can I hold you accountable for problems that stem from the system, right? So it's looking at it, but we want to change where the blame goes and try and look and see how we can really fix things. Right? It's the difference between human accountability and system accountability. From having a blameless culture to really having, you know, how many people were afraid to report something or something went wrong? If you had a bad tube, 
Who, how many people would be afraid to talk to the medical director about it? I sure as heck was, right? I still would be. But we got to really change that culture so it's not a punitive one. Lee County in particular, and a number of places are doing this, but Lee County in particular has really impressed me. This is down in Florida, Fort Myers, Sandoval area. They have really, really pushed that just culture. And everyone has, I mean, the, the reporting that comes out of it, it's not, oh, Tim Saplaki, you know, didn't do the right medication dosing. He would never do that, I know, right? But it's more self-reporting, which is really interesting, the culture has changed. It's the medics and the EMTs saying, hey, chief, this is what happened. Give me a little help. So then they go through a whole peer-to-peer -peer process with education, or maybe it's doing some shadowing, maybe it's doing some OR time, maybe it's riding along with me, whatever. And they've really taken it to a whole new level, which is very impressive. But beyond just having the culture and knowing that we need to change things for patient safety and our own safety is really how we act from day to day. And it gets into safety third. Now, this is one of my favorite t-shirts. Um, uh, some friends and I, those that did the competition, met Dr. McClure, who was here yesterday. A bunch of us were talking about what is safety, right? Now, I'm going to play a quick two-minute video of where it's them from. Anyone ever see Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe? Right? Yeah, yeah. That guy, I want to be like Mike. You know, because he makes a lot of money. But he came up with this notion, and this is the episode, and we started talking about safety really isn't first, especially for what we do every day. Where's the sound? <laughs> Where's the sound guy? <laughs> Anyone see this episode? This is from Notion, and it's not original for my friends and I, but we brought it to EMS and we made a patch. You know what that guy knows? Well, actually, he knows a great deal, but what he really knows is the importance of safety. You look around a place like this, you see it everywhere. Look at the sign up there. As if there could be any doubt. Safety first. Always, 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 over and over and over. But you want to hear the dirty truth? Safety's not really ever first. Safety generally, as best I can figure, is, is third. The reason I believe safety should be third is that it's so important, you can't really put it at number one. Because if you put it at number one and say it over and over and over again, you start to get complacent. And this is what's happened to me over the last four or five years. I've broken fingers, and fractured toes, and cracked ribs, and fused my own contact lenses to my eyes once. And every single time I've hurt myself, it's always been in that fraction of a moment where I take my eye off the ball and I start to think that maybe Somebody somewhere cares more about my well-being than me. It is always a mistake to let that happen. And the more banners you see reminding you of how important safety is, for me anyway, the more complacent I become. So, on the Dirty Jobs crew, we started to say safety third, just to remind you that ultimately it was on you. I'll tell you a story. About three years ago, maybe four, I was, on a, uh, I was on a crab boat called the Bountiful up in the Bering Sea, fishing for king crabs with those lunatics up there, right? And we were about 200 miles off the coast of Russia. The wind was blowing about 40. The seas were easily 35 feet. And the crew was out there working. And I was out there with them, you know, trying not to get killed. And I went up on a stack of crab pots that were stacked on the back of the boat, and I was helping unlash them. And I was scared less. I mean, very, very frightening. And I, eventually, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I scrambled down off the pots, down to the deck, and I went up to the wheelhouse, and I went in, and the captain is hunched over the wheel. And he's like, oh, I, oh. he's doing his thing, and the green water's coming over the bow, and it's just so ridiculously hazardous. I, I looked at him, and I said, Cap, OSHA? And he looks at me and says, OSHA? Ocean. And we had a little laugh, and I'm like, no, seriously, I've been all over your boat. I don't see any signs about safety. I don't see any special guards or rails or, I mean, what's, what's going on here? And he said, son, I'm the captain of a crab boat. My job is not to get you home alive. My job is to get you home rich. You want to come home alive? That's on you. 
I got it. In that moment, I got it. Nobody was looking out for me other than me. I spent every second on that boat grabbing on every single thing I could and not letting go. I put safety first, second, third, fourth, all the way down the list. I never took my eye off it. So it's not that we don't think safety is the most important thing. It's just that when you keep saying it's first, you got to wonder where everything else falls into place. Don't be that guy. Be careful. Safety third. Always in the top five anyway. That's the dirty truth. You know what that guy knows? We'll go to the next slide. There we go. So, my friends and I, colleagues, he was really true. And we were talking about this episode when we were talking about how it the EMS. This is in the front of a fire truck, or sorry, an ambulance with the fire department down in Nicaragua, right? Talk about situational awareness and safety, right? So, in the front seat that didn't have any seatbelts, issue number one, what else do you see here? Railroad crossing? Or not, uh, there's a railroad crossing on the other side. You have a tanker with flammable stuff. You have a guy juggling fire, right? You got the police officer who just snug up right next to us in the, you know, driver couldn't see where he was at. There's, it just, it really got us thinking that what we do can be really crazy, right? So this whole, is the scene safe, putting on my BSI, right? Simulation teams, right? Seems safety is that said every EMT ever, right? But is it safe? The, the whole article that we wrote in GEMS really, uh, you know, goes around this because you get this false sense of security, right? So you get on scene, you pull up on scene, ALS 53, engine two, pulling up on scene, two car MVC, pulls down, wires down, scene safe BS. I can say scene safe all I want. It doesn't make it safe. Right? It's an ongoing thing. Is this safe scene? I mean, is this scene safe? Right? This was great. This was an, an amazing save and rescue. Right? Getting that child out. Everybody went home from that. Right? Then you see headlines like this paramedic killed while responding to a crash. They were on the side of the highway. We had in North Carolina four and a half hour extrication, a tractor trailer with a dozen I-beams went off the side of the mountain, trapped the guy underneath on the hillside. It was steep enough where I was sliding and falling, just walking down the hill, but it wasn't steep enough to repel. But we're underneath the truck with the patient for four and a half hours, why? Because that's what we do, right? And then ultimately got, we got him out, and that story over some beers if you want this weekend, but got him out, everybody went home. Then you get into the ambulance wrecks, right? When we're responding to things or even not. Paramedics get killed, EMTs get killed. We just lost a fire chief in Florida in the panhandle. He was on the side of the road and someone hit him. Has anyone, how many near misses have we had, right? It's crazy. The amount of times that I've had a bruised buttocks because the side view mirrors of the cars coming by, right? It happens, but we're doing the right things because we're wearing the vest that they give us and the high vis. We change the lighting pattern to make OEMS happy, right? And we change the stripings, right? So we can get certified, but there's reasons behind all that, right? Just, I mean, I don't have to deal with snow anymore, but what about the other stuff? What about while you're on scene, the potholes? What about some ice? Right? So why am I showing you this? Why am I bringing this up? Well, number one, I'm killing some time. No. But it's because safety has to be thought of the entire time. Right? This is the, has anyone at, read the labels of your turnout jacket, your extrication suit. It specifically says right on here that you can die because firefighting, EMS, police work, vegan first responders are inherently dangerous and we can die. We can get hurt. This is a warning disclaimer inside my fire gear. Right, so if safety is third, what's first and second? Well, I'm gonna get to that in a moment. But first, it really depends on how you define safe. 
This is, what, a year and a half ago um, when I responded, we had the FIU bridge collapse. If you, you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a new bridge being constructed. The entire thing came down on top of 16 cars that were just sitting at the red light waiting, right? They called me, they dock, we heard a bridge collapsed. I said, we're trying to confirm it. We're getting a lot of people screaming, so it sounds legit, right? And this whole time, how do you secure 980,000 tons of concrete to keep you from being more smashed, right? I hope you like the picture of my, my rear end there with the green helmet. Um, I, it's true, I can get my hair in under the helmet, but we were trying to, trying to find survivors, right? So there's another firefighter even further in, right? This scene, you know, how safe can it really be? So. I, I'm honest, I don't think safety is first. I'm ju just saying, safety is not first. So, there are a lot of things where I want to be like Mike Rowe, right? Be like Mike, you, ha you have to think of things. We don't work in a factory where we can just put up a sign since this or that, right? It's not a factory, and we have an inherent job, an inherent dangerous job that we need to do because we're trying to take care of people. And we're not in the Boy Scouts, we can say, oh, there's a storm coming through, we're just not going to go camping. We've got a job to do. So, comes down to risk assessment and risk mitigation. Risk is equal to the probability of something's going to happen or not happen, and then the consequences therein, right? There's a risk. We all know it, but you've got to know what the risks are. And I'm not saying to be afraid to do our job, but just be ready to mitigate those risks. So you gotta ask yourself, like, what's the task? What do I have to do? And then what do I have to do to get it done safely, right? What are the hazards so that I can do it? This is a runway. I am now a runway model, right? This stuff, you know, is the scene safe? That things can drastically change at any point, right? So I have something to do. How can I best prepare myself to handle these hazards, or at least mitigate them, right? So that everybody goes home. So you fight like you train, right? Because practice makes, practice makes permanent. If you practice perfectly, right? But we practice airway management, we practice assessments, we practice IVs, we practice defibrillation, we practice CPR. How many of you train, whether in your initial certs or ongoing, situational awareness, right? How many of you do joint things, maybe with a, another department and stuff, and the firefighters like, oh, we're going to do the extrication, da, da. then you could go, it's, it's an ongoing chain thing. I want you to train for situational awareness, because fight like you train, okay? So, BSI, is the scene safe-ish? Right? I hate that phrase, um, that phrasing, but I do all these simulations and it happens. You gotta ask yourself, what are the hazards? So, how much danger is too much? You also need to ask yourself. Tomorrow in my lecture, I'm gonna talk about a very, a couple in particular things, whereas a big question, is the danger too much? Right? But you need to ask yourself that. And how do you balance it? Right? How do you balance where oh, well, it's a kid versus an elderly person. What if it's, you know, some stranger versus your, your brother, right? Does that make a difference in how we react to things and how we need to risk mitigate, right? So first you need to ask yourself, is the juice worth the squeeze, right? Is it? The first thing is not safety. The first is getting it done. And if I can get it done, is it going to be worth it? I can run, I can just, you know, pull Junior out here, but is it going to be worth it to pull it as opposed to waiting for it to get a little safer, or do I need to just do some airway manager or something else like that? You got to know your limitations, right? I'm not saying I'm Superman. I'm just saying that he and I have never been seen in the same place at the same time. But even Superman has his limitations. So getting it done, is first. Our jobs are all important, right? We don't have the choice when someone calls 911. And we can't ignore the sacrifices that ultimately some of us have to make, right? 
So what's second? We came up with the fact that having fun. Now it's a little tongue in cheek and you're like, you're not taking it seriously, but we all get into EMS, pre-hospital care for a reason, to take care of people and to do things. So we have to balance that out, right? I love my career. It's been wonderful, right? It doesn't mean hold my beer, watch this. It doesn't mean become job security. It means enjoy it. Remember why you're doing it so that you can practice to be better at it, right? It's a gut check. Am I worried about it or not? And it's about job satisfaction so you can continue to grow and continue to learn, right? So have fun at work, have fun training, just like doing these things. So third, safety is finally third, right? It's definitely not first. I'm not saying that's not important, but it just doesn't come first, right? So you can't have one without three, you can't have two without three, but it's just not first. Right? But it is the most important. Right? So, some take home points, other than I got maybe some patches in, uh, and uh, stickers of it, is know your limits, train like it's real, train like it's your mother that you're saving. Hi, Mom. Understand the mission and the associated hazards that are going to be there. All right? And always stay vigilant. You need to practice situational awareness. And accidents are going to happen, right? Accidents are going to happen, but we can learn from them. Just like my mistakes, if I mess up a medication, I can learn from them. And I can learn from others. And please remember to love your job and do whatever you can do to kindle, rekindle, and discover that passion over and over. So with that, <laughs> safety third, and I sure as heck mean it, wear a helmet or I will fart your ET tube. Thank you very much. today man this is awesome i've never been in a plane like this before it's really not a problem i'm sorry i couldn't do it earlier um when we get a little higher i can make it go upside down if you want is uh, it yeah, good no, like no, it? no 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 okay i get motion sick let's stay away from that. <laughs> i usually charge extra for that i don't i don't know if you're allowed to do that uh every now and then every now and then. <laughs> Whoops! There's a really good chance that the wings will fall off, though. So. But I mean, it's a beautiful day. It's gorgeous there out. Is, there's no traffic. There's no construction. There's no cops. There's no potholes. This well, is there's usually beautiful. not. There's usually not cops. This is great. Thank you so much for taking us up today. It's, it's, Are you taking pictures? Let's take a picture. Yeah. Hold on, stand by a second. Uh, oh, okay. uh, copy, New York Center. This is Cessna Juliet 1631 with you at 10,000. Have you copy up? Uh, read you loud and clear from the Julia 1631, but this is filled up yet for us. Who's that? Uh, New York approach, uh, uh, that's, that's a wind shear. Did you mess with me? Down. No, no, sometimes you hit turbulence. Uh, not, not funny. Let's... It wasn't funny. No, it wasn't my fault. I, I couldn't do it. I can't avoid it. If they had a turbulence sign, I wouldn't, you know. Okay. Uh, stay by. New York Center, this is, uh, Whoa. this is, uh, 1630. Copy. Yeah, 1631, name your attention. Um, yeah, this is this is Philadelphia. We're headed to New York at 1631. Uh, Philadelphia, can you hear me? Philadelphia, go ahead. Uh, Philadelphia, I'm, I'm the passenger in this plane. I, I think something's going wrong. My my, uh, my friend's not making any sense here. Uh, Julia, 1631, just uh, confirmation. How many souls on board and the field remaining? Do you know? How many souls? Souls. How many people? So, three. <laughs> just three let people. your soul okay. grow.
I don't know if he's breathing. All right, we'll get you in the ground as quick as possible. But no, he's sorry. He's, he's breathing, but he's, he's unconscious. City control tower emergency line. Uh, city, this is uh, Philly Approach. We have a uh, Cessna inbound to runway 579er. It's Juliet 1631. The pilot is incapacitated, and we have a non-rated civilian flying the airplane. Three souls on board, two hours of fuel remaining. Cessna Juliet 1631, approaching runway 579. Medical emergency on board for pilot, civilian operator approaching. Three souls on board, category echo response will be ready for their arrival. I'm, I'm in a plane, I've never flown before. How do I remain calm? Then walk you through it. So are, are we gonna crash? We're gonna crash. Attention all emergency equipment response alert to runway 579 left. Attention all emergency equipment response alert to runway 579 left. Start CPM right here. Yeah, this guy is going to go see right? He's in the system here. Yeah.
Thank you very much. A round of applause. Before we leave, if I could just take one moment. If all the uh, if all the 579 folks, can you all raise your hand? I just want to recognize all the 579 folks. They put hours and hours and hours worth of work in this. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at the awards ceremony where they will announce first, second, and third place. So please join us. We'll be live streaming that as well. We hope to see you all tomorrow night at the awards ceremony. Thanks again. Have a good night. Teams that competed tonight, teams that the top three, if you want to get your picture taken with the crew and everything, please come on up.